We are here for another Mule and Donkey Clinic. Are we excited or what? Steve, how you doing? Oh man, I tell you, I've been I've been fighting the weeds around here. You know, we've had all this great rain, and and uh, doggone, it's amazing. Uh, the weeds have been pretty tough. Well, I've and, said I've said multiple times when it rains out there, I'm sure the weeds are tough, but it looks it looks pretty good out there on the out there on the mountains. Lot all that green. Oh yeah, that's incredible. I mean. Darn cows look like the calves look like they're putting on five pounds a day. They're just huge, you know. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, very good. Well, hey, I just want to welcome everyone. I want to say thank you for coming and hanging out for us for this weekly uh, Mule and Donkey Clinic Q&A with, uh, with Steve. Um, here are the ground rules. The ground rules are, number one, we just want to know where you're watching from, uh, who's watching and where you're watching from. So uh, if you uh, if you're hanging out, uh, go ahead and put in the comment section, say say where you're watching, a little bit of what the weather's like, and if you want to throw out there what your mule's name is, that would be awesome too. Um, any questions that you have, you can go ahead and put right there in the comment section, and uh, and we'll get to those. Uh, so don't feel like, oh, I feel like they've already talked about this, or oh, you know, I asked this question last week, and I, you know, I thought I understood, but I'm not going to ask again because I don't want to. No, we want all of the questions that you got, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the replay every single week. We're going to load it up to YouTube. It's going to keep running on Facebook, and folks are going to be able to come, and they might not watch last week's video, but they're going to watch this week's video, and so your question is the question that they had. So um, feel free to ask any question, and the last thing is to go ahead and share this broadcast. And the way yeah. that you do that, if you're watching on Facebook, the way that you do that is there's a little button that says share. And a lot of times, if you're on your desktop, it'll have a little arrow next to it. You just click that and share it to your wall. And the reason why we want to do this is because the whole goal of this is to get Steve's knowledge of mules and donkeys out into the world, to get everything that Steve knows out there so that folks can actually start making a difference in their training, in their riding, in their driving, in their packing, and they can see that difference in the life of their mule. And uh, as a matter of fact, Steve, we were looking at a video earlier today where originally um, the owner of the donkey, uh, he, he was trying different training and what he had been told wasn't wasn't really working out. So you got a hold of him. You didn't actually go out there. You were just conversing back and forth via email and maybe over the phone. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Isn't that, isn't that awesome? Yeah, Mr. Green uh, out of New Mexico, formerly in Nebraska. But he had sent me some video of this cowboy riding on his mule. Well, he's supposed to be a trainer. And this poor, I said mule, meant donkey. This poor donkey was getting jerked around. He had a he had a big old honk and bit. And he should have not been using two hands pulling him around. Nice donkey. I mean, Dave, you know, your youngest kid could probably ride this donkey. I mean, gentle. You could just see uh, this this donkey trying. So Mr. Green asked me, he said, what do you think, Steve? And I said, I'll tell you, I, uh, uh, I think you need to be doing this yourself. You know, he said, well, I'm no trainer. And I said, good. <laughs> That's great, you know. You don't have to have a stamp on your head of trainer. Did you buy the donkey to enjoy it? Yes. Well, then do it yourself. It's not that difficult. And you ought to see what he's done. It's been incredible. I, it reminds me of the lady who contacted us about a year ago. And she's driving her donkey in the harness now. She's riding it. She's been competing. I can't think of what her name is right now. But, uh, uh, you know, folks, you bought these things to enjoy them. Why spend a ton of money with a trainer or a horse trainer and do it yourself? You know, just spend a little time. If they're that bronchy, get rid of them. You don't need to go a trip to the ER. If they're gentle like this little donkey is, folks, you're all going to see this. You're going to love it. This little donkey is trying her heart out. I mean, a nice donkey, but I could go on and on, Dave, during this whole hour, how, how that little donkey is going to be so good. Yeah, it is a really great video. We loaded it up on YouTube. I'll put a I'll put a link to the comment section. Now, I do want to say this. Um, I think we're having some problems getting it up to Facebook. So I'm going to keep working as we go through here. I'm going to keep working to try and get the broadcast to Facebook as is. Um, we are broadcasting to YouTube at the exact same time. So if uh, if you are seeing this on Facebook, great. If you're having trouble connecting, 
um, or if it's coming in and out, click on the link I just put in the broadcast and you can hop over to YouTube. We're going to try to get to broadcasting to both at the same time. So, um, uh, Steve, one quick uh, detail. Steve was hustling in here. Make sure, can you make sure that your uh, computer is plugged into power for me? Make sure that oh, you got sure. that power okay. plugged in. If we don't yeah. have that, we could lose Steve at any moment and we don't want to lose Steve. He's. He is the star of the show, and nobody wants to hear me talk about whatever I know about donkeys for, you know, who knows how long. Um, so as as Steve's getting plugged in, the first thing that I wanted to talk about here. Hi, Judy. It's good to have you here watching from El Paso, Wisconsin. Welcome. Very glad to have you. What's the weather like up there in El Paso, Wisconsin? Hopefully it's nice. Um, the thing that I want to get started with talking about today is um, is cinches. And one question that we continually have and come in is, uh, how do I measure for cinches? Now, we've got some videos that we've put up online in the past of how to measure for cinches. Uh, but I asked Steve if we could do that again today and kind of get a little bit more in, de in depth, knowing that folks are going to be looking at this on online, Folks are going to be looking and they're going to be seeing, uh, you know, exactly, okay, from here to here is where I need to measure or from there to there. That's what we want to do here. And so I asked Steve if he had a drawing and I know he was scrambling to get in here. Do you have, there you go. Steve's got a model here to show us exactly how to measure for cinches. So Steve, are you ready there? You got it plugged in? I, I am ready. All right. Go I ahead and explain to in. us here. I plumb forgot. I, my key got stuck in my ignition in my truck and so here my truck's running and i can't turn it off so i had to disconnect the battery to get in here and do this thing so i didn't get the picture i wanted but <clears throat> can you see the point of the shoulder right here and then you come across to what normally would be the d-ring on the saddle and right below the d-ring of the saddle just take from the center of the belly and and measure up and i think you're going to measure to just about the center part of the body and that should pretty much give you the measurement that you need you can take a a a, a paper tape and go around the whole body and say okay it's let's just say it's 50 inches and then cut it in half it's 25 inches so that 25 inches is going to tell you that you need a 24 or a 26 inch girth. All right, and there you go. It's that easy. So it's it's really simple. And look, folks, it doesn't have to be exact. If you have about six inches minimum from D ring to D ring, that's okay. Okay, really doesn't matter where the D ring is, as long as it's not clear down on the bottom of the belly of the mule. If it's clear down on the bottom of the belly of the mule, then yeah, you're in trouble. But you really would like to see your scent somewhere about in the middle. And then as you tighten it throughout the day, and this is the key thing, folks, is that when you're riding with a breeching and a breast collar together, even though your cinches loosen up, those two breechings and breast collar will help keep the saddle centered. Your cinches are there, yeah, they're to keep the saddle from cantilevering in the back. That's one of the big things about them. But if you've got a, bre a breast collar and a breeching, you're going to do just fine at keeping that saddle into place. And always ride sense? with a breeching. And always be adjusting your breeching as you ride, correct? Right, right. I have <coughs> people all the time, they tell me all of a sudden my saddle was setting uh, up on my mule's neck. And I say, well, you're riding with a crouper? And they said, yeah. Well, the problem is the tail can come up and, and flip the crouper off, and then you can go right over top. I had a guy several years ago in Missouri. Now, Missouri, we're talking mule country, right? He says, ah, oh. he says, I've ridden with a crouper for years, don't want to use a breeching. And I said, okay. So we started this colt. He went good. The next year, Dave, he comes into my clinic just to see me. And he's got this great big ball underneath his arm. He's got a broken collarbone. And, and right after he had started the colt, and I don't know, he was going four or five months. Colt was doing really good. Well, he started blistering the underneath of his tail with that crouper. Ha! So he loosened up the crouper. The mule, and this was fortunate for him, the mule flipped the crouper up and the saddle went over. 
and he hit the ground and broke his collarbone. When I say fortunate for him, fortunate for that donkey or that mule, I mean, because last year, Dave, remember I had three people that had to put their mules down because of tail croupers. It broke their back and they ended up having to put them down. It's horrible. Yeah, I do remember you saying that. And I remember a lot of folks asking, did I hear that correctly? Did it actually do that? And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? A lot of folks, if you've ridden with a crouper uh, and this is the first time you're hearing it, you know what? I've heard Steve say over and over, hey, folks, you're going to make mistakes. The past is the past. You're free at last. Now you know. Make a change. Change it up. It's going to be for the good of you. It's going to be for the good of your mule. Um, okay, so let's see here. We've got uh, Judy Dumermuth saying it's still melting snow, record-breaking snowfall this winter. Uh, it is maybe 50 degrees today, but lots of snow and now mud to get rid of. Oh, my goodness. You know what? We are out here in Arizona. Well, yeah, I guess you don't have to shovel sunshine. So, you know what? Maybe you need to get a, a, a trip to come out here and spend some time out in the sunshine. Steve, I hope that we can do it maybe in the next 12 months or so. I hope that we can do another clinic at your ranch so folks can come out and enjoy Arizona and enjoy hanging out with other uh, other mule and donkey folks. But you do have the Hoosier coming up. You want to tell us what's going on with that? Oh, this Hoosier, this is going to be great. They have a brand new venue where they're going to be doing the fair. And it is an awesome venue. Uh, I've heard lots of good about it. Uh, Pat Pirelli is going to be there. Ken McNabb is going to be there. This Hoosier Horse Fair is going to be awesome. Now, let me tell you, this Hoosier is all people that are giving their free time, they're volunteers, and they, they're they doing it for the good of the equine community uh, in Indiana. But let me tell you, Dave, I've got people coming clear from Florida up to Indiana and bringing their mule. Can you believe that? That's going to be a people, lot of fun. Oh, well, yeah, and I got people from Virginia that's bringing their mule clear to Indiana because they want me to, to, to demonstrate stuff with them and this sort of thing. So <clears throat> I'm actually training more mules now, Dave, on a daily basis, talking to people on the phone. I'm training more mules and donkeys now than as if I was doing them every day here at the ranch or doing a clinic. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And you know what? The difference that that, that we've been able to make doing everything through email, phone, and text message. It's been fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. So let's get into some of the questions here. Let's see here. I've got a list of questions. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I have a mammoth riding donkey, uh, four years old gelding that already leads and rides, but I've not had him very long and he sometimes resists new obstacles or going places. I'm interested in the come along but wanted to ask if there, if I, if it was just for young horses halter breaking, or if it would be useful for a donkey that already leads. Um, the rope halter I use is it different than the rope, or the rope halter you use is it different than the rope halters you buy for horses at the tack shop? And would it be good to use on a donkey that already leads, or is it more for training your lead? And then uh, last one is I have a Fabtron saddle that people tell me fits him, so I can save myself a thousand dollars if I'd like to. So would the saddle pad you sell ensure that he is uh, not uncomfortable in case my horse friends are wrong about the saddle? So we got three questions there. Can I hmm. use, we'll start with the first one. Can I use this come along on a mammoth riding donkey, four years old gelding that already leads and rides, uh, or is it just for the young horses? Okay, so we got the key words. It says they're already leads, but then we got the other words that says we're having some problems with difficulties with other things. They, folks, there's a major difference between one that leads when he wants to and leads and leads when he needs to because of the communication value that you have, not only with the come along rope, with the rope halter. I think we just got, uh, Dave, we just got an email from some people saying, wow, what a difference the come along makes. This come along, folks, just because they have one that leads pretty good, when you get into a new place, new campground or something like this, they're going to find new things. Remember my words this. Remember this carefully. There's no such thing as an animal that's been there, done that. It don't exist. They only have only walnut-sized brain. 
They only have the capabilities to follow you, to do what you know how to do. Not Don't depend on them. Oh, he's seen that deer before. Oh, he's seen that turkey before. Well, he may have seen them before, but now today they come from a different way. Folks, don't think you can desensitize. So go back to this. Yes, use the come along hitch and make your communication more crisper, more cleaner. All right. Keyword, <coughs> horse saddle. I don't care if it's who's it made by. Doesn't make any difference. There's a major difference in where D rings are that are placed so that they're at the right place. Set having having uh, trooper rings and this sort of thing. A lot of these places say, did they say that this this here Fabtron saddle? Did they say it fits mules? Uh, uh, from what I know of Fabtron. I don't think so. You know, they make horse saddles, you know, and, and this sort of thing. Uh, but uh, I don't believe that they sell mules. So that I uh, sell mule saddles. So you might ask her that. But it, horse saddles, the rings are going to be different. The placement of the D rings, the skirting is going to be different. And the tree is going to be different. So the next question then is uh, on the rope halter. The rope halters you buy for horses at the tax shop, would it be good? Would you, the one you're talking about, is it different? And is it going to be okay to put on my donkey? Absolutely. Best communication you can have in the world. The video of Mr. Green uh, in New Mexico, you, folks need to go see that and see how that donkey responds. That is amazing. It's great. So are they different? The only, diff only thing that really makes them the same is their rope halters. <clears throat> what makes mine different is mine are adjustable. Okay. Now, can you adjust that rope halter from that horse? Yeah. If you want to take a bunch of time, pliers and pulling it around, moving it around and put it into place. Yeah, you can do it. What makes mine so much more different is it's the lay of the rope. It's a completely different rope than what most people use. It has to be stiff. It has to be so that the knots are big. And, and that's just two of the things. And, of course, it needs to be adjustable. Yeah. So, that, hey, the, the kit would work good for her, the, the ground communication kit. Okay. That will work the best. I will add that. Uh, I'll add that to the list. Okay, we've got a few more folks just chiming in here. We've got Celeste Daniels from Live Oak, Florida. Hi, Celeste. Now, Celeste has been just an awesome, awesome student. She's been writing in, asking all sorts of questions, and we just love that here. So Celeste, thank you so much for taking the time to write in and let us know what you're working on and share. Uh, we want to keep it coming. We want to hear exactly what's going on. We've got David Scholl chiming in. Hey, David, how's it going? Australia. Uh, Australia. In. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, David, I, I, I heard this, and I don't know if you're going to think this is funny or just a little bit off, but somebody said, um, how do you say – um, how do you say, uh, what is it? Uh, razor blades in Australian, rise up lights, rise up lights. And it sounds like you're saying it from Australia, rise up lights. Isn't that pretty funny? My whole life. Oh, well, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have Dave here in May and, uh, he was we're talking have about that. And I told him that I yeah. would go ahead and drive up and we would, we would all hang out a little bit and spend some time together. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, we do some videoing and move some cows around. We, I got a nice small mule for you, Dave. A nice small mule. Can not, not quite as good as Stacy, but close. Very good. You know, so, so we'll put you out there, and, and you can move a cow too, by golly. That's right. Let's get some pictures of it as well. That's going to be great. We got a, If there's no picture, it never really happened. Uh, we've got uh, Debbie Newby from Cool California. We've got Sammy. We've got Thomas. Uh, let's see here. We've got Micah. Micah's been awesome. Micah sent in some uh, photos that said uh, and said we were okay to use them. And Steve, we just launched a brand new site, and it's just a little hobby site we're doing. Um, I sent you a picture of it. Have you have? Did you have a chance to look at the MuleSaddle.com website we're doing? Yes, I have. That's going to be awesome. That's so yeah. much fun. We have probably five or six hundred photos that folks have sent in over the last three years. And so wow. I said, you know what, we need to just put these up for folks to see. We've got all the permissions. Everyone said that we had permission to do it. So we've been putting photos up on uh, MuleSaddle.com. Y'all can go there, check it out, and uh, and just see mules from all over the world. It's really cool. So Mike is in. He says, I'm listening, but I'm at the arena watching Dad riding a mule. 
break, uh, breaking in his new mule saddle from you guys. That's what we like to hear. So thank you so much, Mike. Glad you're here. We've got Nicole. We've got Karen from uh, Raymond, California. Um, and let's see here. Okay, we've got a question from Celeste. So we're going to get to this one now. Celeste says, hi, guys. Scott and I have built our mule stall 12 by 15. The first three days, she hated it. Biting me, kicking, pawing, and biting the wood. Finally, the fourth day, she is better. She allowed me to go in the stall with her, groom her, and shave her mane and, bri and bridle path. So we are seeing an improvement. Yay. So can you talk a little bit about that, Steve? Is that normal for them to get aggravated, to kind of get frustrated? Is it normal for it to kind of dissipate if someone's like, oh, mine's never gotten in, you know, over it? What, like, what do we make there when you're first introducing a mule that maybe has been out to pasture or had a little bit more freedom into their own stall, into their own pen. Yeah, well, I kind of kind of call it, you know, the kid in the playground compared to the, the kid in the backyard. The kid in the playground's got all of his toys there and his friends and this sort of thing. They can have a ball and do as they want, run and play and this sort of thing. Well, that's what Mr. Mule's had. Well, the problem is Mr. Mule don't need to be out there. You're not fattening him up to butchering. You're not doing that. And if you put them out there in that smorgasbord with all that grass and stuff, folks, all you're doing is disservice to that mule. He's going to have fat pockets. He's not going to do good. So, yes, she called him the witchy mule, this mule. Witchy mule, you know. And let him, let him get mad. Let him, let him say, oh, I don't like this paw kick, rear up in the air. I've seen him do it all, you know. I've even seen them get hung up in the corrals because they were flat being stupid. And believe me, you know, if they're going to be stupid, let them be stupid in that corral with you not on their back. And they'll get over it. They will. Put them in a small corral. Watch their feed. Watch their water. Watch their intake. In other words, take care of your mule. If you bought a classic car that you paid a lot of money for, you wouldn't just put it outside and let the weather beat it on it. You put it inside and take care of it. Do the same thing with your mule. Treat it like your family. Take care of that mule. Water it. Feed it. Clean up after him. And like old Max Johnson said at the Grand Canyon, he said, you know, a mule will give his life for you if you treat him right. And yeah. that's what a mule will do. You know, put him in that corral. They'll get over it. That's a great size at 12 by 15. At my ranch, they got a 10 by 20 stall. Perfect. That's the great thing about this. When you go to get them, they'll meet you at the gate. They get to where they can't wait to go outside and do something with you, you know? Yeah. So I got a question. Um, I've heard you say, I've heard you say a lot, you know, oh, folks will tell you when you're going to buy that mule, folks will tell you that, oh, he's packed, he's ridden, he's dri he drives, he does everything just right, and the, the, the person selling the mule will get up there and, and not meaning anything you know, mischievous or whatnot, that'll get up there. They'll do some riding back and forth and you'll think, Hey, I got a, I got a pretty good one here. And then you get home and it's a completely different story. Um, I've heard you say that what you really want is uh, don't impress me all the things you can do out there in, uh, in the arena. What impresses me is be able to do everything in a 10 by 10 circle. Cause you don't have all that extra room when you're going down the grand Canyon. So with that being the case, do I want to try to do training in my pen? Do I want to do any type of any type of uh, instruction, any type of training inside of the pen? Do I want to always get out? Is there a balance there? Is there a, is there a method to it? What are your thoughts? Well, you know, you can do a lot of work in the corral panel. You can, like, you know, we've got some videos of of getting a mule to respect you on the ground right there in the corral panel. If you've got a round pen, that's even better. If you can put them in a round pen and do your round pin work, and that way you've got your work away from home so they can go into their stall, they can rest and relax. They come out and they go into a corral, round pin, this sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, it's good for them. I like to take my mules out. I put them on a hot walker. I'll put them on a hitching rail. I'll hook them up to a wagon. I'll hobble some of them, but they have a job. But, you know, people are paying me to do that. So, uh, I, I, you know, I take them out and they have something different all the time. So, yes, put them in a small stall. Can you do your work in there? Yes. If you're going to buy a mule, folks, uh, I don't care how many trips to the Grand Canyon they made. That doesn't impress me. How many times they've been up in Colorado. That doesn't impress me. What impresses me is in a 10-foot circle, 
side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hind quarters, go on. You know, so here's what, I, what else I want to tell you. When it comes down to these meals, I have had several people, several people just this past week contact me and say, hey, Steve, I bought this meal and it was supposed to have been there, done that. And now I can't do anything with it. You know, I try to get it to turn. It won't hardly turn. Uh, when I try to load it in a trailer, it won't hardly go in a trailer. And this guy told me, he says, he says everything's going to be fine. Well, I call him up. And and the guy uh, says, well, hey, that's, uh, you know, that just happens. It's mules. And then they told him, hey, you told me I got a trained mule. And, uh, and, and you know, I paid all this money and it's not a trained mule. You know, I'm having problems. Here's the problem, folks. When we go to look at a mule and we listen to the person selling and then we go up the trail one behind the other. Anybody can do that. I mean, that's what the mule does naturally is follows. Watch the owner or whoever is is selling in a 10-foot circle, side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, you know, back up, get on and off in a 10-foot circle. If you see that, guess what you got? A mule with a foundation. But if you got to use two hands to turn them around, if you got to make two hands to back them up, you're paying a lot of money for them. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, that's not trained. Yep. Big difference between a mule that you can hop on and move around and a mule that's actually trained. And and, uh, and we know that because we hear from folks all the time. So that's really good. I appreciate that. So we've got, uh, this is real cool. We've got a, a comment coming in from YouTube. And so uh, for folks who are watching on Facebook, major apologies. We had a few issues getting going. We are broadcasting to Facebook and YouTube. Increasingly, we're getting more and more folks saying, hey, I love the replays on YouTube. I don't have Facebook. Where can I watch live? So we're broadcasting to both Facebook and uh, YouTube today. We've got a comment from Hiker. Yeah. Hiker just says, love your channel. And so we love hearing that. Hiker, thanks so much for putting in a, putting in a comment and letting us know that you're here watching. If you're just tuning in, we want to hear from you. Go ahead and, and just say where you're watching from and, uh, and tell us the name of your mule or tell us the name of the last mule that you rode. We would just, or, or donkey. Hey, let's not leave the donkeys out. And, no. uh, and no. you know what? If the last thing you rode was a horse, we'd be fine to hear that too. Uh, uh -huh. but, uh, but very good. We're glad that you're here. The only rules is that you ask any question that comes to mind. And, uh, and then we ask that you go ahead and share the broadcast, all right? So just on Facebook, there's a little share button at the bottom. Just click that button and it'll share it so that other mule and donkey folks can come in. So um, we've got another question. This one comes from Bill. Bill says, I have three livestock guard donkeys, all jennies, all of different ages, which need their feet worked on. So I'm trying to tame them down. Uh, slow and steady, like you say, after only four sessions in a corral, uh, made of cow panels, I have one which will nervously allow me to get just out of arm's length. Will she eventually allow me to handle her this way, or will I ultimately need to put her into something like a chute? Uh, I haven't seen a video from you on YouTube addressing this problem. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, and, and he's right. I, we don't really have a, quote, YouTube, how to catch the, the, the donkey. I've actually spoke to Bill, and I gave him an idea of what to do. In my uh, video, uh, 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 how to communicate. You see me working in a round pin right off the bat with a mule uh, and, and go from there. What I told Bill to do was if uh, the donkey, wherever the donkey is, use an old fishing rod or if he's got a, he's got a, uh, a buggy whip and reach out and that fishing rod or that buggy whip is the extension of your body. And if you just reach out and move it around, you don't even have to touch them. Just move it around and then put it out again. Remember, do everything in threes. Don't do a whole bunch of times and say, he's not getting it. No, no, no. Let them think about what they just done. Remember, the part that's going to remember things is about the size of a walnut. Out of all that brain, the size of a walnut. So you take and, and use that as an extension. Eventually, You'll be able to touch the donkey. Eventually, you'll be able to get up close and this sort of thing. Uh, the, the video, uh, 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 that how to communicate, that first part there will help you out a lot. And I tell you what, I've, I've round pinned donkeys. And when, uh, 
Eric comes here next month. He's going to have a donkey with him, and maybe we ought to do some round pinning out there and, and get a feel for that. That'd be good. I would love to do that. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, Hiker just chimed back in. Hiker says, I got old Joe and Dixie, two great mules. I would rather have a mule than gold. How awesome is that? Woo! How about that? That guy's a true mule man. He's been bit. <laughs> That's very good. We ought to have a shirt that says something like that. Rather have a mule, mule than gold. That'd be pretty good. That'd be um, cool. That'd be yeah. real cool. Okay, we've got uh, William tune, tuning in from Virginia. We've got Yolanda from the Netherlands. Hey, Yolanda, good to see you. We've yeah. got uh, Bear from Texas, Ann from Texas, Ray from Virginia. Uh, Gary Green is watching. Gary, we put your video up on YouTube. If you didn't catch, we talked a little bit about it at the very beginning. We put your video up on YouTube. It is an awesome video. You're doing a great job. And uh, I had Steve tell me everything that he wanted to write in the comment section there so other folks could see. So thanks for letting us put up there. Uh, Suze from the Netherlands uh, watching. Doug Reed. Uh, let's see. He Doug's got a really simple question here. Let's, let's get to this one. He says, I weigh... 220 pounds, what build of a mule should I be looking for? That's a good question. I don't think we've ever gotten that. What size of a mule should I be looking for? Is there is there any rhyme or reason to pick in, Steve? Disposition. Disposition. You know, folks, my uh, best friend, Andy, who just passed away here uh, about a month ago, he rode a 14-2 Pinto mule that we call Beaner. And he was a great mule, 14-2. Andy was 240 pounds. Look, folks, it's not so much how big and stout, it's how much you prepare the mule or the donkey. If you get them exercised and get them going, they're going to do fine. They're going to do just fine. Here's the thing. <clears throat> you picture you putting a backpack on and not doing any exercise and preparing and going on a trip. You ain't going to last long. And the next day, your back is going to be sore. Guess what your mule and donkey? Same thing. Their back's going to be sore because you didn't spend the time preparing the mule and donkey. If I'm going to go on a, on a three-day trip someplace, I'm going to spend time several months ahead of time getting my mule mentally and physically ready. You know, it's not size, folks. Not training. Not confirmation, disposition. Now, I don't want to see you on a 13-hand mule <laughs> or a 12-hand mule, but, uh, you know, you could ride a 14-2 mule, be no problem. If I was to say what's going to make you look a little bit better, you know, if you want to look at that, buy a 15-hand mule. Pertrons are nice, uh, are, are really nice to ride. Uh, some of your uh, 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 quarter-type quarter mules but when you're buying a meal folks disposition call that meal disposition it's what you want to do yeah yeah you can't you can't really do a whole lot uh a whole lot with a good looking tall mule that doesn't have a willing disposition that doesn't want to be led that doesn't want to be um taught that doesn't want to have a have leadership um yeah. so that's a that's a good word there um the next question that we got this one comes in from uh let's see here uh, I just lost it. Um, oh, before I get to that, we've got Linda watching from Indiana over on YouTube. She says, I intend to attend the Hoosier Festival. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, Linda, when you get there, make sure to look up Steve. And you can even send him Please. a text message. 602-999-6853. As a matter of fact, any of y'all, if you ever want to reach out to Steve, uh, you can give him a call and he will be, if you get the voicemail, leave the voicemail because he will call you back. So the next question that I have here, this one comes from Charlie and it has to do with uh, crossfire rigging. He says, Steve, do you recommend doing crossfire rigging uh, on a mule, crossfire rigging on mule saddle? Um, so first, can you explain to me what crossfire rigging is? And then can you go ahead and tell me whether or not you recommend doing that? Okay. So you have two rings on the saddle. And those two rings have two latigo cinches going to one ring on the cinch. They both come together. It's also called center fire. No, it doesn't work, folks. You're going to have to way over tighten. 
in order to keep that saddle in place. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to and seen over the years that said they go to get on or get off and the saddle rolls, or they're just going down the trail and the saddle rolls. Listen, the back cinch is the most important cinch. Has to be the tightest, front cinch be the loosest. You need two cinches to keep the saddle from cantilevering. And that's the problem. When you pull with a center fire rigging like that, the saddle moves a lot. And so you end up soaring your mule. And here's the downside, folks. Most folks think, well, he's not, he seems to be doing fine. Heck, I, I had one guy told me, or one lady told me uh, down in, in uh, Huma area, she said, I've been riding my mule for five years like this, and I didn't think about it. And finally, one day, the mule blew up, and I couldn't stop it, couldn't turn it, nothing. Well, not only was she using the wrong bit, but she was using center fire on a horse saddle. And now that she looks back on it, she starts saying, wait a minute. Yes, Steve, because I told her, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. She said, yeah. I said, the mule started moving away from you, right? She says, yeah. I said, because she's putting pressure upon the sixth and seventh rib. And I said, the mule, when you, when you went to go down the hill, it went faster, didn't it? Yes, it did. Oh, and oh. When you, when you went to get on, unless you tighten the cinch really tight, it rolled on you, didn't it? Yes, it did. And I can go on and on and on. No center fire, folks. They used to do that with the cavalry saddles, but I want you to notice. <laughs> Here it is, us fat Americans. But those cavalry saddles are 14 and 15 inch. There's just young boys riding those saddles, and they didn't weigh 100 pounds sopping wet, you know. And besides that, they could jump in that saddle, and you and I got to fight to get into it with the with the mane in one hand, horn in the other, climbing up. All right. So next question we got here, I wound up uh, <clears throat> wound up fighting it. Uh, first, we've got Edie uh, watching from. Uh, she says, "I'm late again." Uh, Katie Mule and I are finally here. We've got Doreen. We've got uh, let's see who else. Jennifer. We've got uh, Julie. We've got uh, several other folks here. We've got uh, Dan Davis over on YouTube saying, watching from East Texas. Just got a 10-year-old mule named Chester. Never messed with equine at all before, but thanks to y'all's videos, I'm going to do uh, gonna go pretty good one start uh, once I start training. I love hearing that. That's awesome. And Dan, if you need anything, just let us know. Seriously, anything at all. We are happy to serve, happy to help. And, uh, and we'll point you in the direction that you need to go. Um, let's see here. Uh, Hiker has a question over on YouTube. Hiker says, do you ever notice that some mules from quarter mares are better than others that come from specific QH bloodlines, quarter horse bloodlines? Mine are out of two-eyed jack mares. Mm, well, a two-eyed jack is an awesome horse. Um, and, and, you know, you've got to have the abilities to ride a hot horse like that. And, you know, sometimes these mules can be pretty hot as well. But Two-Eye Jack is an awesome line, just like your Peppy Sam, your Tivio Champ. But I've seen really good mares, really good jacks turn out a really ornery mule, you know. I've seen a really good Jenny, a really good jack, really nice to turn out a really sorry donkey. It can happen, folks. Uh, I, I never look at bloodlines. I never look at this one over that one as far as as far as uh, being quarter horse or tibial or, or uh, uh, gated animals you know I look at disposition period after disposition I look at confirmation and Dave you know as well as I have here recently we've had a lot of meals with downhill hips yeah you know yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's been quite a few. As a matter of fact, since you brought it up, you want to go ahead and grab your model there and just tell us real quick what constitutes, what qualifies as a downhill hip and maybe kind of tell us what degrees there are, whether there's slight, severe, and something in between. Yeah, well, you can see how this mule here, going from the hip to the wither, it's pretty straight. But when the hip is higher than the wither, get back and look at it. If you see that, the hip higher than the wither, that's called a downhill hip. It can be real slight, and you hardly notice it when you're in the saddle, or it can be really severe. I've had people say they feel like they're going downhill all the time, you know. Well, that, you know, if you're going to build a saddle for something like that, it would have to be 
two and a half, three inches thick in the front, just the tree alone, and then narrow in the back. And you don't want to build a saddle like that just for one mule because it's going to be stuck with one mule. So uh, <coughs> with the bars being needed to be correct and the D-rings on the saddle need to be correct, I developed a pad now that we've been using for oh, close to five years with a lot of my clients have been doing really good with it. And it's a downhill hip pad. It's thicker in the front, narrower in the back. Does a great job. I have a lot of people that are buying pads, Dave, that I've been just talking with recently that are trying to shim it up. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, folks, most of you don't understand how to shim them. What's Where shimming? The What's shimming right? mean? Well, what they do is there's pockets in the pad and they take different size uh, uh, felts and they put it in to make it thicker or, or smaller and so they can raise the saddle up or lower it. Well, the problem is they're putting these shims in correct places and it's putting pressure in the wrong places and the mules aren't happy. So it's just basically ways to make the, the they, they just add pieces to shim it to make it thicker. Okay, and that makes sense. Well, and that reminds me of something that a lot of times we'll hear is you might correct one problem, but in the process, if, if and you know, folks, uh, we no one's trying to, to, to cause more problems. You're just trying to correct it. But a lot of times, that's why we like doing these broadcasts so that folks can ask questions because you might not necessarily know that correcting a problem in one way is going to cause five others. And you might not see it today. You might not see it tomorrow. You might not see it six months from now. But a year from now, something's going to pop up. And its yeah. origins were 12 months earlier when you made a correction here. So th that's why we're saying, and if you're just joining, welcome. We're so glad that you're here watching, whether on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, my name's Dave, and this is Steve Edwards. And we're just here to do an online mule and donkey clinic for an hour every single week. So if you've got questions, put them in the comment section. There's, there's no questions that's off limit, and we'll see them, and we'll get to them, and we'll answer them. And uh, if you're coming back from a previous broadcast and you got a follow-up question, go ahead and put that in there here. But that's really what we want to do is answer these questions so you can solve it and get uh, results the right way and not, you know, 12 months down the road realize, oh, hey, this, this, is, this is rearing up here, you know, figuratively or literally and say, hey, oh, goodness, what's going on? And say, well, hey, here's what you need to do. And that's why we're doing this right now. So the next question that we've got here. Uh, this one comes from Linda and Susan Henderson over on YouTube from Pennsylvania. Thanks, Steve, for all the info. Had my mule almost one year. Happy spring is here. Yeah, folks are going to get out there and folks, send in your pictures. Send in yes. your pictures. We want to share them. You're going to be out there riding this spring. We want to show folks uh, all of the different beautiful parts of the world uh, that they're taking their animals. Uh, Linda's question, though, she says, I have an 11-month-old gelding mule lately he has been started he has started kicking out when i get anywhere close to his backside he's not spoiled or mistreated how do i stop this so first off what is a gelding mule so 11 month old gelding mule and then how do i stop this kicking anytime he get we get close to the backside okay so the gelding means he's been castrated uh, and so that he thinks straighter. I call it brain surgery. It's a wonderful thing. Should be done just as soon as you wean them from their mother. So if you wean them at six, uh, six months, then castrate them just as soon as the testicles are hanging down. And at the same time, pull the wolf teeth. It's up here in the top, the wolf teeth. All right, so the next thing is, he's kicking out because he's trying to say to you, I'm the boss. And, you know, everybody thinks they know kick like a mule. So everybody's worried that they're going to get kicked. And, yeah, you can. He can kick in front just as good as he can kick in the back. So what I would do is I would put the come along rope on him and I'd have it in my hand kind of loose. And when you went back and he went to kick at you, you go to, I mean, try to rip his nose off. You yell and scream and you bump on that come along rope. And you make him super uncomfortable because, folks, if you don't, this mule's going to get you. All right? So make it take advantage of it. It'd be no different than a lead mare kicking and lining them up saying, don't, don't do that. Now, you know, we think, oh, stop it, Fluffy. Don't do that, Fluffy. No, 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 folks. The lead mare will kick your gizzard loose. They'll do that. They'll bite you. Yes, they will. I had some talk to some people earlier uh, up in uh, Idaho, and uh, 
uh, they were saying how they pulled a rope out and the mule went bonkers. He's probably being whipped with a rope. And I said, so what? Take the rope and go all around him. Let him get used to it, you know? Uh, because if, if, I, if I hit him with that rope, it's nothing to be compared to being kicked by a lead mare. Nothing. So make sure you do that. Just don't be afraid of him. Get after him. You'll get that come along rope. And when you, they go to kick at you, jerk on that thing. And pretty soon you'll get to where you barely have to say anything. And they'll do it. Yeah, they they learn to respect it. And you gain that respect on the ground, moving around. Uh, that 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 doesn't guarantee that it's always going to transfer over. They're, they're dangerous. They're wild. And we're pre we're the predator. They're the prey. So there's never yep. any guarantees. But hey, you do well for yourself to get them to respect you on the ground. So when you get up in that saddle, they do a good job of, of hearing and understanding what you're trying to say when you're moving around and, and you're kind of at their mercy, right? That's right. Exactly. Folks, you must be the herd leader. Don't be afraid to get after them because if you don't get after them, you're going to pay the price. And if you ever get kicked by one of these suckers, you'll know God. they don't feel good. Yeah. So, hey, Doreen's got a question here. Doreen said, and this is a follow-up from something we were talking about a little bit earlier. She says, you say, get them to turn around in a 10-inch circle. What if it's a big mule? I think he's big, 15, three hands and long-legged and long-necked. Should we still, I mean, is that more of just a general idea or do we really want a literal 10-foot circle? A 10, yeah, first you said 10 inches, so you had me to wonder in there. So that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little, that's a little well, slip hey, there. I, I can take, I demonstrated a lot of times my 15 two mules and I did everything in a 10 foot circle. I turned on the forehand, I side passed, I did everything. I mean, look, what I'm saying to you is if they can do it in a 10 foot circle and they're that well trained, hear that? Not well broke, but they have a good foundation. That's, that's awesome. Try to have a trail someplace. How many trails have you been on that have been less than 10 foot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to the Grand Canyon. I'll show you some, some narrow trails. And if your mule don't know how to side pass, you ain't got enough room to turn around there. You, so, yeah, in a 10-foot span, no problem at all, folks. I'm With no problem. Hey, I used to hook two Shire mules to the wagon. Two Shire mules, 17 hands high. And in the wagon, I would turn to the left turn to the right, and that right there is about 10 foot, folks. Mm -hmm. Two Shire mules on a wagon. And then, you know, if I if I really want to impress you, I'll hook six mules on the front, and I'll take the whole wagon and all, keep the wagon solid, and have the mules turn <coughs> all the way to the left and all the way to the right, you know, because I barely touch the lines they have a good foundation. They can do it, you know. So, uh, you know, if, if you ever you ever watch me doing demonstrations with my Shire mules, you'll see the wagon stays in place. The mules side pass it to the left, side pass to the right. I back them back 10 feet. I can go forward 10 feet. That's two Shire mules, 17 hands high, that weighs close to 1,800 pounds. Yeah, 10 foot, no problem. That's some serious moving. So David Scholl says, is the gestation period of a mare the same when she is carrying a mule baby, uh, the same as a foal? Pretty much the same, yeah. Once in a while, you know, you'll have the odd one that might be sooner or later, but still gestation time is still the same. And, if, and it does vary by mares, uh, you know, uh, by a few days off and on, but yeah, still the same time. Very good. We've got uh, Natalie over from Missouri saying it's sunny in 64. Natalie's watching us on YouTube. Hello, Natalie. We're so great to have, grateful to have you here. Thanks for hanging out. If anybody That's has my a granddaughter. Question, what's that? That's my granddaughter. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Hey. She's my yeah, she's my practice granddaughter. Ah, she, there you go. I've known this kid since she was, well, I don't know, what was it, Natalie? Were you eight years old when I first met you in Missouri? How fun. Dave, she is a natural. That's awesome. It is amazing to watch her work. So I just adopted her, you know. <laughs> I just adopted her. I just, you know, my grandkids don't ride. They're up in Michigan. They don't want nothing to do with the equine. So this granddaughter here, man, I wish she was close. She'd be at grandpa's house every day riding. 
That's fun. That's really cool. Well, Natalie, we're glad that you're hanging out with us. Glad you're here, and I'll have to meet you someday. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. We've got Celeste uh, following up. Celeste just says, hey, heads up. We're eventually wanting to get a well-trained mule, prefer preferably gated if you run across one. Thank you. So, Celeste, if we come across anything, we'll let you know. Thank you so much. No, we uh, won't. What's that? No, we won't. No, we won't. What? Well, we'll take a look at the pictures, right? And we'll say... We'll look at the pictures. I'll be happy to look at pictures. I'll be happy to talk to the people. I'll do that stuff for you. But here's the problem. You know, we used to take my well-trained mule in a clinic, and you would see me in a 10-foot circle, do everything like I was telling you. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have somebody else say, how many has been riding 20 years? Hands fly up. Climb on my mule. Dave, five minutes later, it looked like that mule wasn't even trained. Yeah. So this is, I'm sorry, folks, but I do not tell you where to go buy a mule. I have tried, I've tried to find honest, hear the word, hard to find, honest people with integrity selling mules. Unfortunately, very few people exist, and so therefore, I will not give out any names because the downside, that mule probably did really good with the average person, yeah. but for some reason, it doesn't work with you, you know? So, would I look at pictures? Yes. Would I try to help you? Yes, but I'm not going to say buy that mule. Yeah, Get, yeah, you know, for sure. That's that's a good distinction. I appreciate you uh, yeah, appreciate you clarifying there. Uh, let's wow. see here. We've got Jennifer saying, "I have a mule who came uh, nicely. Uh, year I trained. Why? Why R A I? Very yeah, nicely. Year, tra yearly. Yearly trained. Okay. Very yeah, nicely yeah, yearly, yearly trained. So, we so, have so a yearling is one year old. Oh, okay. Yearling. Okay. Okay. That makes more sense. Uh, we have had months of rain and she has not been ridden for about six months. She's been free in the paddock. Do I start her in a round pin as I do the horses? Are mules really that different? Is she my first? Uh, she is my first and is really, really nice and mannerly. So what do you have to say there uh, to uh, Jennifer's question? Night and day difference between mules and horses. Don't do lateral flexions. Don't disengage hindquarters. All that is is horse techniques, and that mule will run through his shoulder when you start teaching lateral flexions where you bend them around to the, to the right, bend them around to the left, making them soft. No, all you're doing with the mule is the donkey side will stiffen up the neck muscles. They'll be strong, and you got them. <clears throat> with a mule, you start with rope halters that are adjusted. Come along rope, rope halter, Double twisted wire, mule riders, martingale, and then my finish bit. That's the bidding program and how I do that work. Saddle placement is extremely important. I just had a lady, I think I sent you the picture, of this saddle sitting high up on the wither. And the, the uh, trainer told her, don't put a back sitch on and put that saddle way up there. That's a horse technique, folks. That's nothing to do with mules. All right, there you go. So I'm going to put a link to, uh, you mentioned bits there real quick. I'm going to put a link to our bit article, uh, Mule Bits, everything you need to know, kind of talk you through step by step what you need to know as far as training uh, to beginning writing to finished bit, refined communication. That'll be a really good one there. Um, uh, Celeste says, good enough. Thank you. Honest is hard to find. We've got Scott saying, hey, partner, Scott Garter here from Florida. Uh, let's see. We've got Nicole. Uh, we've got Yolanda. Uh, let's see. Astra Swepson says, I made it. We're happy to have you here, uh, Astra. Natalie said 10 years, I think. 10 years. Wow. Eleanor, I think. Um, let's see here. The next question that I had, this one was from, uh, this was from Ray. Ray says, I have a mule that will be two next month. I eventually want to ride and drive. At what age should I begin working with him on both of these things? Okay. You should be working now doing groundwork. As far as riding and saddling, uh, you know, I, I wait till their knees are closed. Make sure the cartilages are closed so you can call your veterinarian, have him do a sonogram to make sure the knees are closed. Uh, starting these young meals out really young is hard on their bones, hard on their system. You got to remember they grow till they're seven years old. Grow. So in order for you to, to have this meal to last you 25 years, Take care of it now. Can you do groundwork? Yes. Can you drive them in a in a in a wagon next to an experienced mule? Yes. Okay. But there again, it's the pounding. So if you'll go out on hard 
uh, surfaces, hard surface roads, the pounding can be just as bad as somebody on their back. So I usually tell people start riding about two years and six months to two years and eight months. That's usually a good time frame for riding because the cartilages are closed, the needs are closed. Have a veterinarian look at it first, and that way you can make sure that you're going to have good cartilage. Good. Uh, hopefully that helps, Ray. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Uh, Julie's question is, I have been working with my donkey to pack him while, uh, while walking. I've been working with him 30-minute sessions. He's doing great so far, but occasionally will lean in on me way too close while walking on lead. Does not do this in the ground ring. How do I work on how do I work on this on the trail while not causing a train wreck? Very hilly ground I'm going on. So what do you have to say there to Julie? Well, the come along rope is extremely important, you know, and then you keeping an eye on your right side. You see, this this donkey needs to learn its space. Uh, what was it? The, we saw a, a, you sent me a video. Uh, uh, oh, uh, that video you just sent me about when I was at Bishop. And I was talking about how we did halter training and the stuff. World Championships one. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm walking that mule around, and you see me stop, and the mule stops. You see me go, and the mule goes. Yeah. That would be a good one for her to see. The main thing is that using a come-along rope, folks, when you're training or when you're – even if you have one that's trained and you're going to a new area, use the come-along rope. Don't ever say, he's trained, he'll be fine. No, he won't. No, he won't, folks. He's an equine. Flight and fright is 24-7. So you get a new venue or a new mule, new donkey, or a new area, you use that come-along rope. And then what you're going to do, watch that video. Uh, and you know, that's the one you just showed me, Dave. And, and, and that video will, will do a good job for you. Yeah, I just put a link in the comment section there. Great. Um, and, uh, and so folks can, can go there, check it out. It's really good. And if you're not following, subscribe to Steve's uh, YouTube channel. You need to be. We're publishing new content there every single week in addition to these videos. Um, and uh, Steve, just in the last, I don't know, however many days, we've got 150 new folks who have subscribed to the channel just wanting to get more and more videos. And, and we put virtually yeah. everything that we've been recording out there for free. So folks can go check yeah. it out. Um, we're getting close to being done with a mule saddle course. Um, we're working hard on compiling this mule saddle course uh, that folks can take and kind of go through step by step by step what they need to know about uh, the horse saddle. Or the horse saddle versus the mule saddle, uh, fitting, uh, all the essential gear, um, training, bits, all of all of that. Uh, we're getting ready to do that, and we're using videos that are already available on YouTube. Eventually, we'll film a, a new course on it, but uh, but for right now, it's there. So go check out YouTube and make sure that you're subscribed if you're uh, if you're not already there. So uh, the next question I got here is Nicole. She says, "Do you have an instructional video that?" Uh, has how to stop kicking. He gets defensive with feed and a few other things. Any video on how to stop kicking? Well, when it comes down to being defensive about feed, don't be in the corral when you're feeding one. And don't feed them all together. Every mule should have his own stall, his own place to eat. Def they, that's natural. You are not going to fix that. It's not going to happen. It's natural. Some are a little bit more passive. So how to keep them from kicking? We were just talking about that earlier. Put the come-along hitch on them, and when they offer a kick, use that come-along hitch and make their nose sore. Right. Very good. I'm just going through the comments here, making sure that we get all the questions. We're getting close up to the hour, uh, but we started a little bit late, so I wanted to make sure that we catch all of the different questions and we don't leave anybody hanging. If anybody has any final questions that they want to put in, Go ahead and do that there. Um, let's see here. Yolanda, we, so we've been uh, communicating with Yolanda. She has, a, uh, she has a mule out there in the Netherlands that had some pretty bad issues. And um, uh, Steve, do you recall what the issues were? I think it was poison, we said. So she had gotten she, poison. Yeah, she had gotten poison. And, uh, and then she had the fly bites really bad. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the poison happened to be some type of soybean uh, product yeah. that, that had happened. So... Uh, as far as I know, Yolanda hasn't emailed me or texted me that she's had any other problems and their, her mule's on the mend. But yeah. it's about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night there in the Netherlands. Yeah, so what she says here is last week when we found out 
you know, the issues, the poison. We started to detox her on a flour and herb base because her kidneys were highly irritated. We forgot something very important, her liver. So we got her for a couple days on red cell and she didn't like it at all. Uh, so she got 10 milliliters per day for five days. Besides that, she got flower detox and added herb detox. Uh, now one week later, she's doing great. Although it sometimes goes up and down. And what I look at uh, when I what I look at her kidneys when I look at her kidneys because they are irritated. They come up above the backbone line, and she is getting slow in movement. In the meantime, I was calling several horse and donkey feed companies, and I also called my straw farmer, and he said the soy poisoning is actually Roundup. Oh no! Oh no! That's no good. Oh man! Oh man! So, looks like I don't see any other comments here. Uh, oh, <laughs> she did. The next comment she has is the breakfast cake is on its way. She sent over ah. the breakfast cake. Oh my gosh! Yolanda, I'm going to drive out to the ranch, and Steve and I, we are going to we're going to hang out together, and maybe we'll even live stream partaking. That would be so much fun. You you are so fun. Thank you so much, Yolanda. That's just yeah, great. That, yeah, the come along coffee and the cake, we ought to have quite a breakfast. That's right. We're just getting the shipping finished. On, we, were, we were working through some shipping issues on the come along coffee. Folks, if you don't know, we're getting ready to put uh, coffee on the MuleRanch.com store. It's going to be Come Along Coffee. comes in uh, light, medium, and uh, extra strong. And we're going to call it uh, uh, Ask, Tell, and Demand. <laughs> so we're just working out the shipping. Make sure everything gets uh, accounted for. And we're going to put that on the store. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, Nicole has our next question. And like I said, we'll go over here a little bit just because we got, we got started a little bit late on Facebook, had those issues. Nicole says, uh, Steve, um, hi from Oregon. I have a Jack that is very sweet, but no matter how hard I work with him on his feet, he will not stand for the farrier. He had a stone bruise and I think he is associating that with the farrier, uh, to pain in his feet. He doesn't have a stone bruise now, but it doesn't matter to, uh, to donkey. Um, any comments there? I mean, I've got the video uh, that I can share of you having troubles getting the, the mule to allow you to hold her feet. Is there anything else that you would recommend that you would kind of suggest? No, that's the best way. If you if you send that video, that'll that shows you how it gets done. The big thing is with these donkeys, you know, you end up being the the fourth leg, and you don't want to do that. So use that video. You'll see how I do the back feet and this sort of thing. Same thing with the other people that have the kickers. Use the that that video will help you out a lot. All right, I just put that in the. Uh... I just put that in the comment section so folks can check it out. Um, yeah, it's a great video. And uh, a lot of times, uh, we don't edit stuff in terms of, you know, try to take out, oh, you know, Steve was struggling here, so we're going to take that out and we're going to put it back in, make it look like it's all you know, nice and easy. We don't do anything like that. The only edits we do is to just condense it down for time a lot of times and, and to condense for points. We'll have one video with one point at five minutes and then we'll have another video with a different point at 10 minutes. So, so that's the only editing that we do. Just so happens that this particular video that I'm sharing in the link section, this particular particular video, we caught the whole thing, and uh, and the Steve goes to pick up the rear foot. You hear him say, "I'm uncocking the hip. I uncock the hip. Now I can move it forward." And she didn't want to leave her foot there, and so she kicks and you know kind of pushes Steve around. And so you've got seven minutes of Steve methodically using the come along rope and using I can never remember what it is. What's the little what do you call it? The black... Um, oh, the black quirk? Yeah. The, yeah. And using yeah. that, running it down the leg, and then queuing up the foot, and you you can see it all happen in real time. It was uh, it was taken from our trail riding with... I think it was the trail riding with confidence clinic uh, that we yeah. did last year out on the ranch. And so go yeah. watch that video. It's a great, great video. And um, the things that Steve's doing, I mean, we're getting proof all the time <coughs> that it's not Steve... It is what Steve has learned. And if you are willing to commit to learning, to asking questions, to being diligent, to treating that animal like one of your kids and really being patient with it, you can do it too. You can do exactly what you see Steve do and you can do it too. Um, let's see. Foster says, uh, why don't you address my question? I've waited all day for this. Foster, I am so sorry. I have moved. 
Let's see. Go back to mine, please. My question was at least half a dozen back urgent to me. Okay, Foster. I'm going to find it here. Um, I'm scrolling. It has. A, it is nothing personal, Foster. I have uh, several hundred comments that come in, and I appreciate you letting me know that I missed that I missed yours. Okay, I can't find it. Uh, Steve, real quick, while I'm looking for this question, uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that idea that, well, man, I just, I'm not you, Steve. I can't do it all on my own. I need someone else to come in. I, I'm not qualified. And this was a little bit of what Gary had is I'm no trainer. I, I got to have someone else come in and do it. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and just how that's not the truth? Uh, no. and, uh, and folks can have confidence going out there. Share a little bit about that while I find Foster's, uh, Foster's question. Now, you know, the biggest problem I have with, with, with this training stuff is people say, I don't want to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. The mule's going to make mistakes. The donkey's going to make mistakes. It's part of it, folks. It happens, all right? Uh, so here's the thing. When it comes down to these, uh, to these trainers, uh, most of them are used to what I call push and shove. They're always pulling. They're always jerking. They're using bigger bits. Saddle's not into place. They try to get a bunch of training done in a short time to make the mule look good, to make the donkey look good. And folks, you didn't buy that mule. You didn't buy that donkey <coughs> to be pestered uh, or to be bothered. You bought it to enjoy it, to take you out of uh, mundane life at the Burger King restaurant or at your at your computer uh, programming uh, thing. Anyway, take you out of that world and put you into the equine world. You can do this stuff yourself. You really can. I mean, it's you know, I, if if you want to pay a trainer to do that and it's done right, it's okay. But I'm sorry, <laughs> just like Gary Green, I had people. I had him send me pictures. Hey, how does this look? And it was it was horrible. Uh, just like Bill Keys. Uh, in Egypt, when when uh, when he when we went over to Egypt, uh, he sent me pictures. Hey, how does this look? And I said, that's not training. That's killing. You know, uh, it's not it's not getting the animal to understand. It's beating them into submission. And I'm using beating as an example, killing as an example, because it's the same thing for me. If you've got to pull and push on one too hard, then by golly, you need to step back and and kick back. You can do it. It's not that difficult. So I've got a, uh, I found, I found Foster's question. Foster, thanks so much for bringing that up. In the view that okay. I had, it wasn't showing. So I went to one of our other admin views and I see it now. So we'll get to it. <laughs> um, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a link in the comments to a video that we did last year um, where we had a question, can a horse trainer train a mule? Can a horse trainer be a mule trainer? And so I'm going to put that in there and, uh, and y'all just go back and watch this excuse me, go back and watch it. And the thing is, is, is there, there might be some folks out there who are just kind of faking it till they make it. But a lot of times it's just folks who don't know. They've trained horses their whole life. They think equine is equine. And so they say, yeah, sure. I can train mules. Sure. I can train a donkey. Uh, whereas what we're saying is no, like we respect these animals uniquely as God designed them, as God created them. And not to say they don't, but we respect them to the point where we are learning specifically about them and we're trying to figure out what the differences are so that we can respect the creation, we can respect the creator, and we can have ourselves an awesome animal. So I'm going to put that in the in the comment section. Y'all can go and watch it. Can a horse trainer train my mule? And uh, it's a really good video. So now let's get to Foster's uh, question here. Foster asked the question. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I just, just lost it. These uh, comments keep uh, refreshing and uh, okay here it is if I buy a mule saddle uh, from you can I expect expect it to fit my new mule or all, are all mule trees different sizes for different mule backs she's 13 three in a medium build thank you I have ridden and driven horses since 1958 but I know I don't know squat about this new adventure other than uh, your site and others some of which I'm not crazy about thank you so this this is a great question um, can what is it that makes the saddle fit? And so can you go into that a little bit? Can he expect it to fit his animal? Okay, number one, I don't have mule saddles. <coughs> I don't want people to think they buy a mule saddle, it's going to be the same as mine. It's not. Night and day difference. My tree, 
my D-rings, everything is different. I send you a video how to do it. I can't tell you how many people says, well, I got a mule saddle, you know, but, and they got a lot of butt mules. And there's the problem is the saddle is starting to cause problems, you know. And so <coughs> I had, uh, matter of fact, I had Bessie here from Florida uh, here. Just, we've been texting back and forth and she was saying, hey, Steve, your saddle has changed. I said, no, I hadn't been the same saddle for 25 years. So they put it on the mule's back. And it rocked. And I says, did you put the hand on the horn and the cannon? She says, yeah, don't do that. Okay, go back and watch the video that I sent. The mules have a fat pocket. When that saddle sits on that fat pocket, it will rock. And the more the fat pocket, the more it'll rock. The way my saddles are designed, you put your hand in the seat. You're not sitting on the horn. You're not sitting on the cannon. You're sitting on the seat. When you sit on the seat, you put your hand on the seat, notice the front of the saddle will come up and you can put your hand underneath there. I think we got some video about that, don't we, Dave? That I had done at that uh, Why Does My Meal Do That clinic? Yeah, we do. And I'll, I'll find it. I'm, I'm going through. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I'm going through making okay. sure we got everyone's questions. You want to keep going there? Yeah. I apologize, yeah. Steve. You bet. No problem. So here, folks, you've got to remember, they've got a fat pocket. Here's the scapula right here, up and down. Right behind that is kind of a, a dip area, and then there's a high spot. Any saddle is going to rock on that. Don't use that old school thing of hand on the horn, hand on the cattle, oh, it rocks. It will rock because of that high spot on the mule. That's why I designed my saddle with the rear cinch where it's placed so that when you set the biggest place that I want to be fitting exact on that mule, it's only where I'm setting, exactly where I'm setting. I'm not setting on the horn. Besides that, I don't want that saddle to be pushing into the scapula. So if you're doing this, folks, you're doing yourself an injustice and same thing with the mule. You're not going to get the actual fit. Besides that, you can't throw a saddle on there with all the rigging and everything and say, yeah, it fits. No, you, you don't know that because you've got all the skirting, all the padding, all of that stuff on that saddle and you cannot see truly the tree setting on the mule's back if you look at some of our videos you'll see the actual tree you'll see the semi quarter horse tree you'll see my tree not a mule saddle tree but my tree and you'll see the difference it's mm -hmm. right there yeah absolutely so uh i believe we've got one more question and then uh i'll just make sure to go through and there's a couple of comments that folks had so uh debbie asked the question how fast can you move from hay and pellets to just pellets so we've got a, a nutrition a diet of both how fast yeah. can i make that transition to only pellets well it's going to kind of depend on your meal because so what i usually do is i wet the pellets number one so it makes it a little bit more palatable for the meal and they get a little moisture number two i'll put some some river rocks in there so they have to move the rocks around because here's the problem they're going to want to gobble down that feed and then they look around there's nothing else to eat listen once that pellet hits their intestines and starts hitting in their stomach it's going to swell up and it's going to then they're going to think they're they're fed okay so uh, uh usually it's over about an eight day time frame six to eight days and then you're completely off from the hay and into the pellet but just take your time don't get in a rush go slow uh and eventually you can just feed nothing but pellet that's good so i put a link to the uh feed talk video that we've got and i'm putting a link to mules can't stand prosperity uh, folks, yeah. these are two resources, um, probably two of the most heavily used resources that we have on the site, and and it's just because uh. they're 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 that good, and the and the information is uh, is timely. Uh, let's see here. So we've got Jerry uh, saying, "Hi, Steve. I love my cowboy saddle. It fits both my mules, and both were very different in the back size. So Foster, hopefully that's a little bit of an assurance there that we've got a customer right here wearing uh, using one of Steve's cowboy saddle." Two different mules, two different backsides, fits both of them well. Foster says, I need to subscribe to your program. I'm now 65-year-old novice. You know what? We <laughs> there there is no there is no time that is too late to start getting educated and foster. As you go on this journey, and, and it's not even a journey, this adventure, because they're awesome, 
awesome animal. Yeah. As you go on this adventure, we want to come along with you. So if there's anything that we can do, uh, just let us know. You can call Steve direct 602-999-6853. And that phone number is on the website. So you don't have to remember it right now. Uh, you can send a message to me, support at muleranch.com. You can send a message to Steve and we'll get back to you. But you're not alone on this journey and, and you're not alone in your learning. We're all here together. We're all doing it together. And that's what we love about doing this um, is that we all do it together. Uh, let's see here. Foster says, thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for being persistent. I really appreciate that. It wasn't anything personal. It was literally Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg not showing me your question. And I'm glad that you said something. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Johnson's Taxidermy. Steve, when are you coming to Oklahoma for the event you were invited to uh, and where it's going to be located? Thanks. Sherman Johnson, Norman, Oklahoma. Was there something on the docket that maybe was going to happen in Oklahoma? I, that's a new one on me. Uh, if I get an invite, you know, I'm, I usually can make arrangements. Yeah. Uh, hey, Sherman, let us know if, uh, let yeah. us know where we, where you're talking about. We, we will follow up on it and we'll make sure that, uh, we'll make sure that we do our due diligence there. Uh, let's see maybe, here. Maybe he's inviting me to go turkey hunting up there in Oklahoma. I don't know. I know that would be a nice invitation. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Suze says that, okay, uh, let's finish up this and then we'll be good to go. Let's see. Uh. So talking about the Roundup, Suze is out there in the Netherlands with Yolanda. She says, GMO is Roundup ready. Uh, let's see, I have sent the tack and the trace. And I think they're talking back and forth to one another. GMO genetic modified soy is Roundup ready. So there you go. A little bit more information on that. And I think, golly, I think that's everything for this week. Let me go over and check YouTube. Uh, YouTube Dawn uh, chimes in from, from Connecticut. I'm a green rider, uh, green horse, a young mule from a brew mare. I'm looking for a trainer. He's about two years old. And uh, so let's end on that one, Steve. We talked a little bit about it, but I'm just going to ask you the question directly. Do folks need to go out there and hire themselves a trainer? No, take your time and do it yourself. I mean, you can do that. You know, it's going to be so difficult to find somebody. You're going to buy a horse. You're going to get a horse trainer and he's going to have it to where he's riding it and things like that. It's going to look good. Until one day you run into a problem. It can be a variety of problems of not stopping, not going, where they do lateral flexions, where they disengage hindquarters. It, you, you can have mega problems. Uh, take your time. Do it yourself. And if you really don't have time, you're missing out on a tremendous blessing because I can tell you the people that have trained these mules themselves, wow, they, they, they did it, you know. They did it, and that's what's important, because these, uh, oh, excuse me. Afternoon the, getting to you? Yeah, well, <laughs> I've been, yeah, I, I've been flat, been busy. It's been crazy, <laughs> and pulling, doing weeds and all this stuff, and then all the book work. But anyway, it's tax time, you know. So, uh, so you know, folks, do it yourself. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. If you do the groundwork from the groundwork to the saddle, Dave, I got a video, just reminds me. Yeah. I got a five DVD set called Colt Foundation. You see five people who have never trained a Colt before, who've never ridden a first ride before, and, and you see every one of these people, everything goes good. Every one of them. You know, step by step, folks, it's not rocket scientists. You you sure don't want some of these cowboys climbing out there. Yeah, I'm putting the link right now in the in the comments to the uh, Colt starting video. Colt starting, literally typing starting video. That makes for great vi that makes for great entertainment. Dave typing words. Um, I put that in the comment section there. Everything that we've talked about is in the comment section. All the links, everything like that, folks. If you need anything, um, if you need anything by way of tack equipment, instruction, advice. Um, we're here to help. We're here to serve. Uh, that's why we do these every single week. I'm glad that we got this uh, this thing going over to YouTube. We've had probably about 30 or 40 people watching in on YouTube over the course of the broadcast. So we are so grateful to have you. And we'll yep. do more to promote that. So folks who don't have Facebook, they can hang out with us on YouTube. And I don't even think you have to sign in to watch on YouTube. I think you can just play it. So that'll be great. Um, Steve, is there anything that you want to say as we kind of wrap up here? Uh, another week of this uh, online Mule and Donkey Clinic Q&A? Well, you know, here's, here's the thing, folks. We tell everybody to call us. You know, call me. I'll be happy to, to talk to you. 
But when you call me, I'll be honest with you, I don't answer the phone. Just to give you an idea, yesterday alone, I had 62 phone calls. 62 of them. Now, they weren't all mule-based or donkey-based. They had some other just everyday things. But still, what I do is when you call, I'll have your message. I'll call you up, and I'll say, hey, what can I do to help you? And I'll help you through, you know. Uh, so th that's what we want to do here. The purpose of these sessions is to answer your questions give you the confidence to do it yourself. Yeah. These, there's nothing difficult about training these mules. You know, we make it difficult because we think it's, you know, it's mysterious. You know, they kick, they ride, buck, they bite. Uh, watch some of these videos. You'll see it. It's easy to do. You know, like Mr. Green, go for it. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, uh, Steve talks often that when he first, uh, when he first you know, started to put, uh, Steve Edwards saddles on sale online. Uh, his wife Susan would say, "Hey, no one's going to buy a saddle from you if they can't sit on it." And 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 what we've found is that uh, that's just it. Just hasn't been true. It makes sense, but yeah. when you understand the structure and the framework and the blueprint that God gave these animals, uh, you can create something that is accustomed to their unique frame, their unique bone structure. And so we, we were, we were, you know, excited to see that thousands and thousands of saddles later, like folks are, folks are yep. able to actually buy online and experience the real difference. And, and yep. it kind of leads us to, could, can you really train a mule or a donkey over the internet through videos and through, uh, through phone calls and text messaging and Facebook lives and, as much as it might have seemed, you know, weird 15 years ago, now we're finding we are hearing from folks that yes, you can. Yeah. So it's it's the truth, and you can do it. And, and what I love about um, what I love about the opportunities when we do have folks come in and we do get to see them face to face for different clinics um, is the fact that they are already doing it where they're at. And when they come in, it's almost for just like a little shot in the arm. It's not yeah. teaching them from the ground up. They're already at it. They're already learning and applying and growing. It's just a little bit of a, hey, let's let's accelerate a little bit. So that's all I've got, Steve. That's all you got. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Remember, um, if there's any questions that we didn't get to, send me a message, support at muleranch.com. We'll add it for next week um, and uh, share this broadcast. If there was anything you particularly appreciated, click share. And then just type a message for your Facebook friends and followers saying, hey, this was awesome. They answered my question or, hey, I loved it when they talked about this. And that's how we're going to continue to educate uh, equine folks on the differences and, quite honestly, the unique awesomeness that's inside of these animals and, yeah. uh, and get more and more enjoyment out of it. Right, Steve? That's right. Absolutely. I, uh, it's amazing to think that uh, you know we can be here on the Internet talking about these mules and yeah. this sort thing where before uh you know i would travel from state to state border to border put 150,000 miles on my 2007 uh 40 foot toy hauler and three dodge trucks traveling around showing people yeah. well now we can actually do it on the internet step by step some of the dvds i got thanks to you dave and your and your good crew there yeah. we got all this information there that's folks it's it's, it's, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. These guys that talk about them, the, the mules and horses that buck, wait a minute. You know, uh, you, you see that five DVD set, you're not going to see that. You'll see every one of these mules going. These people have never been riding a bronc before, and they'll do good. Just take your time and enjoy it. Do your groundwork. Forget about the world of your office, wherever you are. Come into the world of mules and donkeys and relax. Take it easy. When you got a problem or two, call me or go on the internet. I'll show you how to fix it. Yeah. It's not that difficult. Very good. Awesome. Well, Steve, thanks so much for taking some time again. We went a little bit long, but uh, I'm glad good. we did. We're uh, Hopefully, we'll be all smooth sailing next week with YouTube and Facebook. And uh, folks, we'll make sure to... Uh, to announce both uh, links. So if there's a preference that you have, you'll be able to watch there. So until next week, bye-bye. Adios. Hey, hey, hey. Happy yes. trails. So we're yeah. done. That, well, that's it? That's it. Okay. Good. Well, I was going to say in the future, we're going to be ranching. You're going to see me dragging calves to the fire. Going to see my saddles at work.
Oh, we need then, to do that. Yeah, we'll be doing that. And then then you get to go ride my favorite mule, Dave. Let's do it. I call him Dave. You know, I said, man, this mule's got a great disposition. I think I'm going to call him Dave. Does he, he have the spiky hair, hair too? I got his hair sticking right up to it, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, when you see it, you'll see, yep, that's Dave, all right. Stuck you know? his hoof in a light socket. Yeah, there you go. That's right. All right, very good. All right, Steve, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Yep.